It is time for me to move from my shelter of safety to sail as a pilgrim over the waves of the sea. It is time to be still, to seek the Son of Mary, time to rest, time to leave behind my fear. And I will not fear the storm, though it rages around me, for slowly I am learning to place my trust in you, to forgive every hurt and to loosen every burden, to let go and to follow where you lead. I will lift my eyes to the mountain.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. We may be seated. I share with you a message that has come to us from the Vatican on behalf of the Holy Father. Most Reverend Oscar Cantu, Bishop of San Jose in California. His Holiness Pope Francis was saddened to learn of the death of Bishop Emeritus Patrick J. McGraw and he sends heartfelt condolences to you, the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the diocese. Recalling with gratitude Bishop McGraw's years of ministry to the church in San Jose, the example of his compassionate pastoral care, commitment to interreligious dialogue, and concern for justice toward immigrants and their families. His Holiness commends the late Bishop's soul to the love and mercy of Christ, the Good Shepherd. To those gathered for the mass of Christian burial and to all who mourn Bishop McGraw's loss in the sure hope of the resurrection, the Holy Father cordially imparts his blessing as a pledge of peace and consolation in the Lord. Signed, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Secretary of State, the Vatican. The Gospel of John begins with these words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In life, Bishop P.J. cherished the Gospel of Christ, the Gospel he received on the day of his ordination as priest and bishop. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come blessed of my Father. In baptism, Patrick Joseph received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Let us pray. Amen. 
grant, we pray, almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop P.J. McGraw, to whom you committed the care of your family, may with the manifold fruit of his labors enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Zirach. If it pleases the Lord Almighty, he who studies the law of the Most High will be filled with the spirit of understanding. He will pour forth his, wisdom, his words of wisdom and in prayer give thanks to the Lord, who will direct his knowledge and his counsel as he mediates upon his mysteries. He will show the wisdom of what he has learned and glory in the law of Lord, the Lord's covenant. Many will praise his understanding. His fame can never be effaced. Unfading will be his memory. Through all generations, his name will live. People will speak of his wisdom and in assembly sing his praises. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd Crowning me with love. 
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves God is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way and God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this, his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me 
more than these? She said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't plan on saying this, but uh, Bishop PJ wanted his casket to be on the padella in front of the altar, on the ground, just like the popes in Rome. <laughs> well, he got his wish, but let me tell you this, all of us who were the pallbearers, we got a workout. Also, in his uh, written funeral arrangements, uh, Bishop P.J. designated me to deliver the homily at his, this, his funeral mass. The day before he died, I tried to dissuade him, but to no avail. As we know from the uh, book of Exodus, unlike Moses, uh, who dissuaded God from insisting that uh, he speak to the people, we know God relented and appointed Aaron to speak instead. You all know PJ, of course. PJ did not relent at my insisting that someone else preach 
today. Rather, he said, listen to me, listen to me. And you uh, are all very familiar uh, with uh, when he would say, listen to me, you did what he asked. So here I am. He went on to say, Dan, be brief and to the point. He always thought that I uh, spoke too much and, and uh, tried to explain everything. And he would say to me, get to the point. What's the point? <laughs> well, I may not be brief uh, because how does one capture the life and ministry of a priest and a bishop in a few minutes? As to being to the point, there is so much that can be said, stories told about PJ's life and ministry. But first of all, I want to say on behalf of Bishop Oscar Cantu, the clergy, religious, women and men, and the laity of the Diocese of San Jose, and on my own behalf, I wish to offer our condolences to Bishop PJ's family, to his brother Tom and his wife Alico, they are with us today to his sister-in-law, Frances, who for health reasons uh, cannot be with us today, but I know is with us uh, in spirit through the live stream. To his nieces, Siobhan, Aileen, and Neve, his nephews, Patrick and Derek, and three of his 10 grand nieces and grand nephews all of whom are with us today. Today, on this very sad occasion, as we mourn PJ's sudden and untimely death. I believe for most of us, PJ's death is like a light that has gone out or like a tree that has fallen in the forest, making a lot of noise and a big gap. These are my images of Bishop PJ's death. A giant in our midst has fallen and we will miss him. Indeed, we will. And he used to say that to me and to many other people, you will miss me when I'm gone. I wish to express to the McGrath family also our gratitude for giving us the great blessing of Bishop PJ's ministry as a priest and bishop in the Archdiocese of San Francisco and here in the Diocese of San Jose. I, of course, was doubly blessed to be PJ's best friend since 1964. That was the year he and I entered the seminary. From de then until his death, we walked the road of life together. Just as his Episcopal motto says, together in Christ. PJ was always there for me. He was always with me through the joyful and difficult times in my life. Indeed, he was a true and loyal friend. In Ireland, they use the term anim cora, basically a soul friend. I can honestly say PJ was that to me, genuine and sincere 
in his friendship. And may I add, not only to me, but to his family and to all whose lives he touched. Now, we all know that without love, the world would be a bleak place. So we should not be surprised that love occupies the central place in the gospel. Jesus said his followers would be recognized by the love they showed to one another. He even went further and said they would be judged on love. St. John of the Cross, who lived in Spain in the 16th century, was also echoing the words of Jesus when he said, in the evening of life, we will be examined on love. In the evening of life, we will be examined on love. To those who are sensitive to the needs of others, life offers numerous opportunities to practice the commandment of love. And it is not just doing or giving things, rather it is giving of oneself in little ways, giving of one's time, energy, and love. Love is indeed a way of life. You know Bishop PJ has shown us how love can be practiced in ordin ordinary and everyday ways. PJ was a kind man, and he was ever gracious. And he would always say, harshness is the vice of barbarians. He was also a compassionate man. In other words, PJ, when he was with someone in uh, sadness or hurt, he could taste the tears of their sadness, of their hurt. And he was very generous, very hospitable, who found the deepest satisfaction in life was to devote himself to the well-being of others. He respected the dignity of each person. Why? Because he believed that each of us is created in the image and the likeness of God. You know, he always thought of himself as an introvert. Not true, I would tell him. You are a real extrovert because with your charm and your humor, you made friends easily. One thing for sure, when PJ was with you, he was present to you. You were the only person in the world. He never looked over your shoulder. Bishop PJ would tell you that he spent his life in search of the historical Jesus. In 2008, uh, he and I went on a sabbatical to the Holy Land in an effort for him to find the historical Jesus. PJ concluded that after more than 2,000 years, it was a little too late for the historical Jesus to be found. At the same time, he searched for the Jesus of faith. PJ, of course, questioned everything in the seminary and afterwards. He had to make sense. It had to make sense to his logical and clinical mind. And this 
may I say, was not a lack of faith. Rather, it was more an effort to know more about and to experience the Jesus of faith in his life. After our sabbatical, PJ uh, told me that he found Jesus and he found him where he always was, right inside of his very self. And may I add, Jesus, uh, PJ saw Jesus in everyone he encountered, which includes all of you. We know that on May 7th, PJ's quest finally ended. He has now met the Jesus of faith, face to face. As he himself used to say at a funeral to the family, your loved one has now met the Lord. And then he would add, and they recognized each other immediately. I am confident that is true for PJ, face to face with the Lord, and they recognized each other immediately. PJ entered the seminary in 1964. That was one year before the Second Vatican Council concluded. In his years of formation, he embraced the teachings and the spirit of the council. I used to say to him, uh, you know, you are a Vatican II priest and bishop. And he would say to me, even the day before he died, to the core in what I said and did. One thing the council promoted was collaborative collabor collaboration, working together, and not just from top down. In the seminary, we had collaborative interaction with the faculty through what we called then the Student Council. Well, PJ was elected representative of our uh, class. However, it was contested. Something about PJ buying votes. It was all untrue and the election stood. PJ was the most intelligent student in our class. And at the end of the year, rewards were given for theology, scripture, liturgy, canon law. The reward was a religious or theology book. Well, PJ received an award in every subject every year. He had a library of religious and theological books ever before he was ordained to the priesthood. I think I received one or two books in that time. PJ, as you know, he was ordained a priest for service in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. And we all know uh, he was very prim and proper. Everything had to be right and in its place. In his early, one of his early assignments, on a very wet day, there'd been a lot of rain, he was, he was conducting a graveside service at Holy Cross Cemetery in San Francisco, when all of a sudden, the ground where he was standing gave way and PJ sank down to the, in the muddy grave. Well, he had his cassock on, and of course, as he was sinking, his cassock came up around him like this. And um, the funeral people rescued him, pulled him out uh, of the grave, and the cassock fell down around him, and of course, as we used to say, the cassock covers 
a multitude. So he looked fine except for his muddy shoes. They were conspicuous to everyone. But as PJ would say, I was mortified. In 1979, he went to Rome to study canon law. And you can imagine he had numerous stories about his time there. And I know he sure shared many of them with you. But what PJ treasured the most of his days in Rome was the great friendships he developed with some priests. Those friendships perdure to this day. Upon his return to San Francisco in 1977, he went on to serve as judicial vicar of the archdiocese until 1986, at which time he was appointed pastor and rector of St. Mary's Cathedral. During his time at the cathedral, he was privileged to welcome and to host the late Holy Father, St. John Paul II. In 1989, he was appointed Auxiliary Bishop of San Francisco. And he tells this story about himself. One day, uh, St. Teresa of Kolkata, we know her better as Mother Teresa of Calcutta, came to him seeking his help to purchase a certain home for her sisters. PJ said to her, Mother, property in San Francisco is very, very expensive. He was trying to dissuade her. And with that, she took out of her sackcloth bag a statue of St. Joseph, saying to PJ, I intend to bury it in the garden of this particular house. Well, you can imagine PJ, his eyes rolled to heaven. And he never thought any more about it until a few days later, he received a phone call from Mother Teresa to say she had got the house as a gift. <laughs> and Archbishop Quinn said to PJ, we can't get anything, and she gets a house just like that. <laughs> but you know, it was a good lesson for PJ. God is in charge. He liked to be in charge, of course, but this told him that God is in charge. And to never forget that faith and perseverance pay off. Bishop P.J. always care, cared about the less fortunate among us. It is why he was so generous in giving to various charitable causes. And he tells this story uh, about a homeless man named Cyril. P.J., on his way to work at the Chancery in San Francisco, would come down this off-ramp from the freeway, and there at the end of the ramp was Cyril, and he would stop and give him a few dollars. Well, Cyril went missing for a long time, but then he returned to the place to his, at, the, at the end of the off-ramp, and PJ stops and asked him where he had been. Oh, he said, I was in San Diego for the winter months as it is warmer there. And then Cyril said to PJ, now I remember you. You are the one who have a very small name, but for a very small name for such a big man. And we all know PJ was very conscious of his weight. He was always trying to lose weight. But one thing about him was 
He had a great sense of humor and he could laugh at himself. And he told that story laughing at himself. Bishop PJ became the bishop of this diocese of San Jose in November 1999. One time he was asked uh, if he was a conference bishop. In other words, was the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops important to him? Or was he a Roman bishop? And PJ said, I'm neither. I am a diocesan bishop. I've known PJ for many years, and I know he was very honored to be the bishop of the Diocese of San Jose. From our conversations, I know that he had a great respect for and a love of the clergy, the priests and the deacons, the religious women and men, and the laity. He had a particular love from, uh, and respect for women religious because he always appreciated his early education by the sisters of the Holy Faith. PJ was committed to teaching, to the teachings of the Second Vatican Council, especially the role of the laity uh, and the liturgy. He implemented a diocesan plan so that men and women, youth and young adults could be attracted to and engaged in their church. He enabled the clergy, religious and laity in nurturing this local church. He had confidence in you and he let you do your work. He brought the best out in you. He was a hard worker himself and expected you to be the same. He believed in service. He never asked you to do anything he was not willing to do himself. He firmly believed the church was all, was all the people of God. Bishop PJ was concerned about the needs of others in the diocese. It is why he introduced what he called the circle of excellence, where people could provide him with, with funds to help such causes as tuition assistance or uh, emergency assistance. Being able to help people in need was near and dear to PJ's heart. He loved this Basilica of St. Joseph. And as you know, he had a great eye for good art, which is why he had the statues of St. Joseph and St. Clare of Assisi commissioned and installed to remind us that the diocese and city of San Jose are in honor of St. Joseph and the county of Santa Clara in honor of St. Clair. Furthermore, he had the ombrellino installed to remind us that this church is designated by the Holy See as a basilica because of its history. His retirement, you know, was only for four years, but he enjoyed every minute of it. And I want you to know that he was forever grateful to all of you for your support of him. There is so much could be said and stories told about Bishop P.J. But today we acknowledge he has shown us love, shown us how love can be practiced in ordinary, everyday ways. PJ was a friend of Jesus, 
the Jesus of faith, which is why the Eucharist was central in his life. The word of God, the body and the blood of Christ nurtured him so that he could say with Peter, you know I love you, Lord. It is why I followed you. PJ believed firmly that God loved him. It is why he took to heart that he ought to love others. As St. John told us in his letter in the second reading today. You know, one thing he loved to tell this story, and I'm sure you've all heard it many times, but uh, it was a story about the late Cardinal Archbishop of Westminster in England, Basil Hume. When he said, Princess Diana, what he said of, uh, what uh, Cardinal Hume said of, of Princess Diana during her funeral service was this. She was loved, she was flawed, but lovable. But most of all, she was loved by God. Was PJ flawed? Absolutely, he was just like you and me, like all of us are sinners. But the one thing he believed is that we were loved by God. And that is why he would tell all the young people who he administered the sacrament of confirmation to, he would say to them, never, never forget that God loves you. And PJ would want every one of us here today and those on live stream to embrace the fact that God loves each one of us. As the Eucharist nurtured him, in turn, he nurtured others with a wisdom. He was very wise and he was understanding. No pushover, as he would say to me, and he wasn't be firm and strong, with the knowledge and a counsel, with kindness and with words of affirmation. You know, he always only saw the good in people. All of these gifts helped PJ to be a good, loving and loyal friend to all, both rich and poor, alike. On the day before he died, uh, PJ, with the new technology, was able to FaceTime uh, his family in Ireland and some priests. And what did he do? He thanked them for all they had done for him. He thanked them for their friendship and their support. And he assured them of his love for them. Was that a sad moment? Absolutely. But as time goes by, it will be a treasured memory for those he spoke to. I certainly was, and I believe all of you are better for having known PJ, Bishop PJ. We know that those who love others have nothing to fear for the day of judgment, as John tells us in that second reading today. Indeed, they can look forward to it. PJ said, now Dan, don't canonize me, and I hope I haven't. But I want to conclude with this poem that was written by an Argentinian priest who was written in Spanish, but the English translation goes something like this. Eternal glory to the man I sing, who was father, teacher, and good friend. With his life, he taught us things that with love ran through his veins. And preaching them with fervor, he captivated us 
with his sweet poetry. Today, as you take him to heaven, there are tears of those who loved him in this life. Lord, give us the grace of wearing his mantle as Elisha wore that of the prophet Elijah. PJ, may the good and merciful God uh, take you to himself and uh, forgive any wrong you may have done. And uh, may he, uh, uh, may you be, um, may he always keep you and hold you in the palm of his hand. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for Bishop Patrick Joseph, his family and friends, and for all God's people. For Bishop Patrick Joseph McGrath, baptized into Christ Jesus, son, brother, uncle, friend, Anamkara, shepherd whose delight was to feed and tend the flock of Christ, especially the holy people of the Holy Church of San Jose. May he know Christ and the power of his resurrection forever, we pray. For Bishop McGraw, liturgist, preacher, and mentor, who proclaimed God's word in our midst, baptized and confirmed into eternal life, reconciled and anointed, blessed in marriage, ordained into service of the gospel, consoled and lifted up. May the one who began this good work in him bring it to fulfillment. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Oscar Cantu, for the priests, deacons, lay leaders, religious, and baptized faithful of the Church of San Jose. May you love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, holding in grateful memory Bishop McGraw, companion and friend, we pray. Lord, to your heart. For the youth and young adults of the Church of San Jose, may God continue to fan into flame your zeal for the work of dialogue and partnership, ministries sparked to life in you by Bishop McGraw, faithful teacher and guide, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholics and all people of goodwill committed to the Church's social teachings, especially the dignity of all human life, the right to housing, immigration reform, and support of labor, may your efforts bring forth the harvest of justice nurtured in you by Bishop McGrath, preacher, preacher and shepherd, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the beloved dead of our own families and friends, for all who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, may all the dead awaken to the embrace of the good God and rejoice forever in God's infinite love, we pray. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who mourn the death of Bishop PJ, may we find our hearts still burning within us, grateful that we walked together on the road to discipleship. May we strengthen one another with this hope, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, richly blessed by the gifts of Bishop PJ, his wisdom, friendship, encouragement, and unfailing good humor. For all of us for whom he did not cease to pray, may the consolation flowing from the heart of Christ surround and unite us in love as we hold fast to the memories of our brother and friend. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all consolation, searcher of mind and heart, the faith of these is known to you. You entrusted Patrick Joseph to our care, and now you embrace him in your love. Take PJ into your keeping, together with all children who have died. Comfort us in your sorrowing servants who seek to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
is a big enough. If that's her, it yeah. already happened once. Yeah, she's ready. Could you hear me okay? Could you hear me? Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which you, your departed servant and bishop, Patrick Joseph, while in the body, offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Santo, 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 santo es el Señor, Dios de
indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Annunciamos tu muerte, proclamamos tu resurrección. Ven, Señor Jesús. Ven, Señor Jesús. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us of an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious parties, and with all the saints, constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, PJ whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in resurrection, when from the earth he will rise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. 
to our then departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Thank you. God bless you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
wilderness will lead you to your heart where I will speak integrity and justice with tenderness you shall know Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table. Where saints and sinners are friends, I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. My bread will ever sustain you through days of sorrow and woe. My wine will flow like a sea of gladness to flood the depths of your soul. Will 
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Patrick Joseph, that by the sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. unspoken still the truth in silence lies as I gaze upon your vision and the truth I try to find here I stand with John the teacher and with Joseph at your side and I see the Lamb of God on the altar glorified. Golden rose, Queen of Ireland, oh my hands and trouble.
I invite the family members who wish to say a word on behalf of Bishop E.J. to come forward. On behalf of our family, we would like to thank Bishop Cantu and all the priests, sisters, and lay people who have spent countless hours making the last three days a true celebration of my uncle PJ's life. There are so many special people in PJ's life, but I want to especially thank Father Dan. Thank you for always being there for PJ and all of us. My uncle PJ was known for his many little sayings. Over the past few days, we have laughed, remembering them and collecting them in our minds. One of my favorites always came when he was giving you directions. He would always say, now look at me. <laughs> he was super organized and always knew where everything was. He would say, a place for everything and everything in its place. Not being particular organized myself, we had many disagreements when I stayed with him many times here in San Jose. I love to think about the time we built an Ikea dresser to keep me organized or laid lar large stones in the garden. He always had a job for me and he was excellent in giving me directions while I did all the physical work. Every year, PJ would visit my family in New York after the Bishop's Conference in Washington, D.C., and each summer we would spend many weeks together in Ireland. We had incredible banter back and forth. At home, he was just Uncle P. Drinking tea or hot whiskey in the sitting room with all the kids running around. He went away with us on family holidays and we dragged him to the beach and amusement parks with the kids who we fondly called the Balubas. <laughs> As I held his hand in hospital last week, he told me that even though he complained about what we, he called our forced fun, he loved every minute of being with us. He reminded me that family is everything and instructed me that no matter what, we need to love and support one another. And PJ, I promise you we will. I will miss my uncle terribly, along with the rest of my family, but I rejoice in the memory of all the trips and good times we had. He was so at peace when he was dying and looked forward to being reunited with his mom and dad and my uncle Sean. And just as here on earth, he believed that there was a place for everything and everything in its place. We know that there is a place for him in heaven that we are sure of. I love you, Uncle P. For the first time ever, PJ, as you look down on us, I'm going to say to you, you can listen to me. First, I'd like to thank some people. I'd like to thank the hospital staff who cared for PJ during his recent illness and gave him dignity as he left his life. I'd like to thank all the staff of the diocese that supported and worked with PJ since he arrived here as Bishop of San Jose. Thank you for following his journey and making his service as a bishop such a rewarding chapter of his life. I know PJ loved his vocation. And this happened through a combination of his incredible direction as a spiritual figure, but also required dedica a dedicated following from his parishioners. And this is evident from meeting people and hearing the wonderful stories of joy and the compliments being shared with us about PJ over the past number of days. I'd like to thank all the staff, priests, bishops, monsignors, cardinals, uh, clergy, sisters, who've helped bring this week of celebration and mourning together. The choir for their beautiful music. They've shared us with, with us for these past few days. So I've been going on here, Diana. You can cue the music and play me out, okay? <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to thank Dan for being such a great friend to PJ for so many years. I don't think even the expression the odd couple comes close to describing their amazing friendship. My father, Sean, who's PJ's brother, passed away almost 14 years ago. And since PJ passed away on Sunday, I've been left with the same sense of loss that I did when my father passed away all of those years ago. You all know PJ was a spiritual, you all, you all know PJ the Bishop, a spiritual compass, a friend, a colleague, a supporter, and a leader. 
but to us, the McGraths, he was Uncle P. He was a great man, a great uncle, and he was also a great family man. He was the glue that held everything together for us. As kids and now even as an adult, we would always look forward with excitement to the biblical event of PJ's arrival home and the significant logistical undertaking to reach his standards, whether it was for the Christmas break or a summer holiday. It would immediately put my mother into a complete spin. If any of you know Francis, you'll understand what I'm talking about. She would turn to a headless chicken, planning, baking, cleaning, dusting, shopping, ironing, buying food, buying wine, and of course, a few bottles of lemon cello. It was always a highlight in our lives. PJ's love and respect for all, of, for all of us was always palpable, which is why this annual visit was such a significant part of our childhood growing up. I finally remember summer holidays driving around Europe, five of us squashed into a small car with its trunk loaded with suitcases and wine, dragging its backside around Europe for three weeks in the heat and sweat. I remember walking on Port Marnock Beach with PJ for two hours or more when I was a kid, chatting about life, school, friends, hobbies, everything. He had such an interest in all part of our lives. And even now when I think of it, it gives a warm, comfortable feeling inside. My father loved PJ. It was dad's big thing each year to be able to spend proper time with PJ. And he was generally handed a list of jobs by my mother, Frances, to be done in advance of the arrival. Predominantly including painting, sanding, fixing, and a bit more painting. I used to love watching himself and my dad after a barbecue. My dad barbecued everything, including the next door neighbor's fence one year. Um, and they'd enjoy a reasonable quantity of wine and then start to exchange stories and laughing like bold teenagers. As we grew older, the occasional insight into PJ, Tom and Dad's escapades as teenagers would bring tears of laughter to our eyes as they both enjoyed spilling the beans about each other's antics and how they did the utmost to drive their poor mother and father to distraction. One funny story I'll share with you that PJ used to tell every time he came home. My father was approximately seven years older than PJ, so obviously they shared different chapters in their life. Uh, and that, that, that age gap, I suppose, is something that that led to this story. My father had started in the police force in Ireland, and as a young lad at the weekend, would go out to have one or two relaxing points with his friends, or at least that's what he told his mother. Now, PJ knew better, and it became a point of contention for PJ that when dad arrived home from the pub, his father and mother were always asleep and didn't realize one or two points actually meant seven or eight points. Dad used to get away with murder with his mother, and this bothered PJ, so PJ hashed a plan. So using his significant arts and skills, arts and crafts skill set from school, including a scissors, a lot of cardboard, a lot of tin foil. PJ constructed a life-size human skeleton. He hung it in Dad's bedroom in front of the window with the curtains and window wide open. The reflection of the moon made it shine and sparkle from head to toe and it danced in the breeze. So later that evening, Dad came home after midnight, after his one or two pints, shook himself outside the door to clear the cobwebs and quietly crept up the staircase, ensuring to be as quiet as a mouse and not to wake anyone. When he closed the bedroom door, he let a sigh of relief not getting caught. But he spun around and was confronted by a floating, shining skeleton dancing in front of him. Seven or eight pints, he let a roar of fright waking the entire house. And that's how Granny and Grandad found out what one or, two, one or two pints really looked like. PJ had the last word. He had an extraordinary way of connecting with people, young and old. He was educated and interesting and engaging to speak with. I used to love watching my two kids, Shane and Carla, joke with PJ and test his patience to see them laughing at him and his jokes. He really enjoyed people's company, adults and children alike, and laughter was always high on his agenda. I think it was significantly evident from a significant involvement in the youth organization, uh, the Global Youth uh, Council that he was involved with, that he recognized children are the future and he championed this, even though he loves to play the grumpy uncle. Standing here today, looking at the scale of the congregation gathered, I think is a great testament to PJ. I think it really highlights to all of us how fortunate we all are to have had him in our lives. My mum, Frances, who I'm sure you, as many of you know, could not travel with us to be here to say goodbye to PJ due to her health and the bereavement of her brother, Paddy. She was devastated not to be able to travel, but she's watching today and will dearly miss PJ's friendship. On behalf of my mum, my late father, Sean, my sister, Siobhan, our kids, my wife, Siobhan, and my kids, I'd like to say thank you, PJ. Thank you for your love, your care, your advice, your guidance, your friendship, and for being an inspiration of a person in all of our lives. We'll miss you, and we love you dearly. Slána Wally Makar. Just before the final commendation, a few uh, notes of gratitude to various public officials who have graced us in these days of mourning, Congresswoman Anna Eshoo, 
Mayor Matt Mahan, former Mayor Sam Licardo, County Supervisor Cindy Chavez, District Attorney Jeff Rosen, interfaith and ecumenical leaders, a dear friend, Rabbi Dana Nagat, Nurdin Kaparad, Fatih Sarigot, close friends and collaborators, Bishop PJ, Monsignor Francilia, Father Brendan McGraw, uh, M McGuire, <laughs> I'm used to say McGraw, a major family member, Father Chris Bennett, Father Sergio Ovando, and Monsignor Dan Welton. The McGraw family and, and Francis, who could not be with us, thank you for allowing us to honor your, your brother, brother-in-law, an uncle, a dear family member, and for gracing us with your presence as we grieve together. Diana McAlintal and all of our wonderful musicians that Bishop PJ valued deeply. The Vietnamese community, Bishop PJ was proud of the dedication of Our Lady of Lavang, and surely he is rejoicing with us from heaven. Priests and, and the deacon community, women religious, men religious, Bishop PJ was close to you, valued your friendship, prayers, and ministry. Countless laypersons with whom Bishop PJ held valued relationships, valued friendships. He welcomed your collaboration and ministry and fostered your spiritual development. Father Jeff, Father Chris, and the entire liturgy team, our seminarians, Gerald and Eloise Angelus, for feeding our priests, our bishops, and the McGraw family. The Knights of Columbus for standing guard, City's Flowers to Lima Campania Funeral Homes, the staff of the Chancery, Father Ernesto and the Cathedral staff, our wonderful diocesan Catholic school students, elementary and high schools, those who helped with live streaming, Various Catholic organizations, Dr. Julie Sullivan from Santa Clara University, Greg Kepperly from Catholic Charities, Mary Amek from the Catholic Foundation, and so many others. I'm sure there are many whom I have failed to name. Bishop PJ sees you and is grateful. To the Irish Consul of San, Fran San Francisco, Michael Smith, Cardinal McElroy, Cardinal Mahoney, thank you for your presence with us. Archbishop Gomez and brother bishops. And last but not least, to Pat Allen, a longtime associate and friend. With faith in Jesus Christ, we must reverently bury the body of our brother. Let us pray with confidence to God in whose sight all creation lives, that he will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother and command his soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of sin. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry him home to be at peace with the Father. May he rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of all the saints. to you. 
To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of Patrick Joseph, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to the place of his rest. After our closing song, we ask everyone to please remain in your seats as the clergy sing our brother Patrick home. <laughs> 